What is up, you guys? Thank you so much for stopping by once again. We're going to be talking about Mullen today, but please uh, make sure to hit the subscribe button and uh, like the like the video so we can get this for this information out to uh, people who want to learn about the trade. Uh, we're going to be coming at you today with Mullen price action. Definitely an interesting day today. Uh, let's see. So let's go ahead and start with this first chart here. We're going to do the immediate term, uh, the immediate time frame analysis first, right? So it does look like we are respecting this, uh, uh, this, this ascending channel that we mentioned yesterday. And, uh, please don't, don't mind that I have, uh, three, uh, fibs right here. The, the reason why I have three fibs is because, uh, this was the previous price action as we were leading up to this, uh, to this point. And this is today, and this is also today. Uh, we're definitely going to get into all of that. Uh, so let's touch on what is happening at the moment. So we have found ourselves just slightly above the 10-day simple moving average and also uh, above the 7-day exponential moving average here. Uh, this can serve as a, as a form of support for us. Now... Uh, just please notice that all, as well that we do have the SMA 50. Let's just that could be actually the EMA 30. Yeah. So this is the 30 day exponential moving average, which, uh, which could also serve as support. And, uh, actually a very important note here, now that I'm looking is that we have found support at the not 618 and this inverse ratio is, uh, is an ideal area for us to find support. Now, price action is indicating a continuation, a continuation to the downside, and the reason I can tell you that is because if if we're looking at just the basics in this formation, we have uh, tested the resistance once, twice, and this is the third time. Now, to the credit of an ascending uh, channel, usually. We, we tend to see a uh, capitulation after the third test, meaning that uh, this is a, this is a bearish formation uh, by nature. So what I'm trying to say is that after the third test, th this becomes a little critical. And uh, the reason why I'm saying that is because we can potentially fail uh, fail the channel, find support at the 236, and then start testing the 382, which has direct confluence with the channel bottom support and our 50-day simple moving average, which which could eventually start just curving like this with uh, with some declining price action. Um, that is, that the indications of that are present just based on raw price action. I'm not saying that we're going to do that immediately, but that is a threat. And we do have to keep that in mind. Um, congratulations to to those of you who did open up uh, the 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 long puts, like I suggested, uh, between the one spot six one eight and the two fib, like we mentioned last night in last night's analysis. Uh, good deal, you guys. Congratulations once again. Now let's uh, let's continue here. I just want to make sure that we are on the right path. Uh, okay. We we. Uh, there's a couple areas here that you that you should know along along with having the conf, uh, the confluence of uh, the 50 day um, simple moving average along with the 382 and the channel bottom right so let's go ahead and draw a trend line here so that we can see just uh, where we are okay first of all this uh, level is also confluent with the previous channel high and our Oct the dates are down here guys remember this is uh, October 20th uh, highs now let's go ahead and zoom out just a little bit more to see what we got and oh, okay all right so this has direct confluence with our August 23rd uh, highs from the run up on August 23rd so I mean this is perfectly in line I'm sure that uh, we'll be able to find other areas, but we're on the one hour chart, so it's a little more it's it's a little difficult to be able to zoom out like that. And I want to leave this chart as as the one hour for now. Okay, let's look at the notes here. I want to make sure. Okay, uh, yeah. Now let's do this. Let's do a similar uh, trend line now to the. Excuse me, you guys. I'm trying to. I feel like I need a burp or something. Um, 
to the to the top of the channel. Now, if we just extend the channel, you can you can see that we're reaching we're reaching the the one spot two seven two at seventy three ninety three, which I don't I don't again you guys usually these channels tend to tend to realize after after the third touch. That's not to say that we can do uh, a fourth test of the resistance, uh, but this is leading into potentially uh october 20 october 26th uh which could be tomorrow end of session or the, uh, or just before it that we can touch this I, I mean that's just because the channel is leading in this uh in this path right and we're not saying i'm not saying that this is definitely going to be it but let's uh, just like the support let's draw a trend line uh and this trend line will tell us uh just how uh, confluent other other areas are so first of all the the one spot 272 just like we said has uh confluence with our channel top and now let's zoom out okay so if you can see let's go ahead and just make this a little bigger so you can see just how confluent this is so we have uh on september 23rd 2022 this served as resistance. Resistance here on August, I'm sorry, September 31st. Uh, and these these candles here, opening and close in opening and closing candles, uh, pretty much right at this at this trend line here. And these are on September 8th. Uh, let's let's see here. And and yeah, also right here serving as support. And yeah, this was March 22nd. So yeah, this is a this is a pretty important uh, resistance, you guys. That that is a that also has a lot of rhyming. Um, okay, so let's look at the notes and see where we can move past here. If we do if we do fail if we do fail this and continue our way uh, to the bottom, we could immediately find a quick support at the let's see that is the 48 cent level at the 30 day exponential exponential moving average before bouncing up and testing the not 618 as a resistance and then coming down to test the channel support uh, with a possible wick down to test the SMA 50 along with the 382 and the channel bottom uh, that that's that's uh, definitely in the cards you guys uh, let's let's look at the notes and see what else we got. Ta -ta. Okay, we got the channel. Yeah, we got the channel bottom. We got the channel top. That's good. Okay, let's move on to the next chart and uh, see what we have here. Okay, uh, a few things to watch out uh, in this area. But for the first, let's just talk about what we mentioned yesterday. Yesterday we talked about finding uh, support within this. 100-day uh, simple moving average. This is the SMA 100, and we said that we could likely find a bounce right here. So we we definitely did. In fact, we used the seven-day exponential moving average as a form of support before uh, bouncing and and you know confirming our SMA 100. The bad thing here is is that we are uh, at 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 a resistance at the one spot two seven two uh fib ratio right here so i mean it's not such a it's not such a desired uh it's not such a hugely des desired fib ratio but it, it does fit within the uh, within the golden ratio which is between this is what we were talking about yesterday that we could find the resistance in between these two areas or at the one spot uh 618 before retracing and potentially finding support at the one spot 272 to trade sideways a bit we we pretty much have done that except that we closed this candle below the one spot 272 that doesn't say that doesn't mean that we can you know retrace and find support at at the SMA 10 or the Seven or the seven day exponential moving average or the 100 day uh, simple moving average before, you know, bouncing again and potentially testing the one spot six one eight again and then doing this whole thing again. Um, th there is that possibility and I'm talking about in the immediate short term and uh, there are several risks happening here and it's almost making me feel like I should actually be bearish on on Mullen stock for the time being. And uh, the reason why I'm saying this is because this is uh, what we're looking at here is volatility uh, represented by this indicator, BBWP. We are 
at extreme expanded levels here. So this is this pretty much topped 100 percent uh, expansion. So what th what this is indicating is, is that w I mean when we reach these extreme highs, these critical highs, this is indicating uh, a, a large potential amount of volatility incoming. And we're on the, we are in the 12 hour. So this could, this could likely, I mean, we've been tracking it for now. What these are every single period here is a 12 hour period or a 12 hour read every bar. So we've been tracking it for, for a few days now. So this, the moving average and the spectrum line, the signal line have topped. I mean, at the very, at the very top of this, this is, we're going to likely see, see some, some serious volatility coming in just similarly to what we saw here, except that, I, uh, there could be the po I'm sorry I'm stuttering you guys it's just this is it's hard to it's hard to read this because we have the momentum oscillator at overbought levels I mean we're at 84 we could still we could still continue on to previous highs we've reached 97% I'm worried because the pivot is starting to weaken yeah, with it, that doesn't mean that it just can't correct and continue up to the upside, but it is starting to weaken. It's not as is not as defined as it was yesterday when we were able to call an upside. We did say yesterday that we can start capitulating from that area there or find a sideways uh, price action after after finding that resistance on top. This, I mean, one one of the the moving average actually has no bias in direction except that the signal line is facing towards the upside with a I mean barely to the upside so we could get uh, we're, we're gonna we're gonna jump into the RSI is it just so that we can see a multiple time frames of uh, of uh, direction bias but usually we're able to pair the momentum oscillator along with BBWP in that case being volatility versus momentum so that we can catch a bias in direction but we we are arguably with i mean we're at the beginning stages of overbought here uh, we still have the potential to raise remember guys we are at 83 percent. we still have the potential to raise all the way to the 90 above the 95 percentile and before finding some type of uh of pullback now if we do find a pullback from around these areas here while the bbwp is signaling a huge amount of volatility coming in this could trigger a, a massive capitulation so th this could uh this could literally have us come probably all the way back to our <laughs> to our uh october 19th <clears throat> uh lows which are these are the metrics right here for the candles you guys so when we point at the candle we can see the lows of about 20 it says 2156 low so uh, th i'm not saying that that is exactly what's going to happen because we do have the uh not 236 fib ratio supporting us at about 20 uh 26 is that it yeah, 26 uh, cents, and we also do, I mean, we also have the uh, 382 at 30 cents, which could also be confluent with our 50-day 50 50-day uh, simple moving average in the 12-hour time frame. Okay, so, the, the yeah, those were really important things for me to talk to you about because there is the threat or the potential of a huge downside move prob probably after... After a little more upside, but uh, again, you guys, I can't, I can't guarantee that. Let's continue to see if we can get that bias. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Okay, so yeah, now let's go ahead and move on to uh, the so, some important RSI signals here. So again, this is the 12-hour time frame. The reason why I'm looking at higher time frames, you guys, uh, along with a really short immediate-term time frame like the like the hourly, is because. I, I want to show you guys what we can do in the immediate short term as well as what to look out for for the few days coming. So I know a lot of people were asking me about where do you see Mullen on Friday? So if I were to answer that just just like without <laughs> without really thinking uh, or, or just having these things in mind, I'm thinking that we could possibly be back down to test some lows down here. Um and here's another reason why I have found uh, two primary drives of hidden bearish divergence and hidden bearish divergence looks like this. We have created a high in the RSI signal 
uh, on, let's see, what was that date? That was June 22nd, 2022. And we have now made a lower a lower high in price action while making a higher high in the RSI signal. This is is particular to a bearish uh, divergence and, and it's hidden. So this could already be in play. Uh, it, it, we could already be facing this the the results of this. Uh, uh, bearish divergence, which also has a lot of rhyming with the previous chart. This here, signaling that we are in overbought levels. We could potentially go up a little more before before really facing some serious downside. Um, I, I, can't, I can't say that that's going to happen right away, you guys, but it's just Mullen has been moving pretty aggressively to the upside and usually when we have this type of upside and in, in, in aggressive moves we uh tend to fall just as fast so this is a this is a kind of a kind of a warning shot for everybody please don't be overly bullish on mullen if you do if you do want to go long uh there is a uh, there is the potential to where we can test again like i said the one spot 618 on this uh chart here we can we can potentially test the one spot. No, no, no. Actually, sorry. This it would be this one here. Yeah. So we could potentially test that sixty-one cent level, sixty-four cent high that we that we checked out today, and 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 then facing some rejection. But it, that that's considering this potential upside signal. So anyway, now that we got now that we got the twelve-hour RSI out of the way, let's uh, jump into a multi-pane. Uh, 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 a view here so that we can be able to see several time frames of the RSI uh, all at once. So let's start with uh, the immediate term time frame, micro time frames. Let's go to the 30 minute. Uh, good thing here is, is that we are still above the moving average and we're still trading above the moving average. However, we do have a slight pivot toward the towards the downside but if you notice that they're both facing kind of uh horizontally here so there's no real bias in direction here other than the fact that we're in a very shallow area of the bear weakness percentile uh, i'm sorry you guys this is for the new viewers uh let me go ahead and explain the rsi one more time so the rsi has a basic setup right here you guys this is the 70 percent. this is the bottom 30 above you have overbought but uh, under 30 you have oversold right so now i have split the rsi into two primary areas the uh the bottom area here the bottom half is the bearish control zone uh and we have the bullish control zone on the top half uh now the inner halves is the bull weakness percentile and bear weakness percentile. The outer halves are bear uh, strength percentile, and this upper half here is the bull strength percentile. So what we want to do is not give too much credit when, when we're within these areas here because we're likely to be pulled when we're in the shallow areas of the of the bull uh, the bull weakness percentile we're we're likely to be pulled into this uh, to the bearish control zone and and you know similarly from the bearish from the bear weakness into the bull strength so into the bull uh, weakness so we have to kind of get into the into the deeper areas of either side in order for us to start gravitating towards the towards the bull strength or the bear strength so we can look at the 15 minute just to see if there's immediate suggestions here. So 15 minute does have a little bit of upside here and it is still within the bullish control zone. We are above the moving average and, but just know that again, we're in the very shallow areas of the bull uh, weakness percentile. Let's go up and look at the buy hourly. So this is a buy hourly RSI. It is suggesting a continuation to the upside. However, today we have failed uh, bull strength and we are reversing from pretty, uh, well, 83.84% overbought. Uh, and we have moved below the moving average and jumped into bull weakness. Now, we are in the shallow areas of bull weakness, which could have us jump in to the bull strength percentile and finding resistance from our moving average in the buy hourly. Let's go to the four hour and see what we got. 
uh, for our is suggesting a continuation to the upside. We ha today also, let's see, we have reversed from 88% overbought, moved below the moving average, which is bearish. We do have an upside pivot in a similar situation as the buy hourly to where we can move up and potentially find some resistance uh, from our from our moving average, which could be in the deeper in the deeper bull strength percentile. So we we could be seeing some immediate short term upside before uh, before some downside. Let's move up to a higher term time frame. So this is the six hour RSI and it. This is what I mean in the other time frames, you guys. Check this out. This is finding support from the moving average. The, the RSI signal, purple, is finding some support from the moving average, suggesting a continuation to the upside. So... A six hour is the six hour time frame. I can definitely put some more weight. We're within absolute bull strength percentile here. So, uh, li the likelihood of having maybe, 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 maybe one more day of green is in the cards. But, but let's, you know, let's just keep on moving here. Let's go to the eight hour. Uh, the eight hour has a downside pivot, it's very weak. And the moving average is giving us a hint, though. The, the moving average is still moving towards the upside. So we could potentially influence the 8-hour from the 6-hour, but that is not a guarantee. This is the daily time frame since we already looked at the 12-hour. The daily time frame is still suggesting upside with an upside pivot. The moving average is way below with, with, a, with, a, with a significant upside pivot, and we are well within the area of bull strength percentile. So let's look at the buy daily and see if that gives us any edge to uh, we're we're okay the moving average is below it is now pivoted towards the upside we do have a weakening upside pivot however still an upside pivot and we are in the critical lows or the critical shallow area of the bear weakness percentile which means that we can likely be drawn into the bullish control zone bull weakness to be particular here and uh let's look at the three day and see what's going on there three days still con still suggesting some upside as well you guys we may be able to see uh, one more green day of of, of of Mullen stock now the green day is very subject to technical analysis because there is a there's a potential of having a panic sell event and if the panic sell comes in that could that could trigger the BBWP into into realizing what we're looking at here this could this could you know based on the rsi signals this can correct come up to the 97 percentile and this can be even more topped off when, with another bar here and then face a serious capitulation event into which where we can find some uh some new lows potentially potentially a first stop of either the uh not 618 at 36 cents uh, it would be between between this area as a first stop followed by uh possibly the the 36 cents and finding a support range between the 23 uh the, I'm sorry the 26 and the 30 cent at, at you know after after one after one or two more trading sessions so uh I am remaining a bit bearish for the medium term time frame but slightly bullish for one more day i do not suggest entry into this unless we do uh unless we do test our one spot 618 or or today's highs tomorrow so if we do get a wick to the upside there could be a potential uh uh impulsive wick to test the sma 200 this is the 200-day moving average, which we can uh, see a wick to test. It, this, is, this is in direct confluence here. The 2 spot 72 and the SMA 200. And, uh, you know, also also at 85 or 86 cents at the 2 spot 618. There is a strong potential that we can see an impulsive upside here and then face face a huge, uh, a, a huge downside after it. That is where I would suggest long puts, and this would possibly be uh, a pretty good gain uh, uh, for 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 whoever does long at around these levels here. I'm thinking between it to start averaging in at, at the first of all at the the sixty one 
to uh, 64 cent, this would be a starting to average in. So position one entry, uh, position two entry, and position three entry here. So then you can, uh, so then we can do a type of uh, sell by percentage uh, type of situation. So we sell first at the uh, 49 cent at the SMA 100 and the uh, the one spot 272. And then we, we let go some more percentage at potentially the not 618 to find support there. And then we can see if we can have some runners uh, down to the 30 cent to 28 cent area. So that this would be like the strategy play that I would that I would do for for long puts. Of course, this is not financial advice. I am not a financial advisor. Please take what I do say and what I do show in these videos as a form of entertainment only. Do your own DD, guys. But we can well, what I can say is that we can always discuss this in the Discord. Uh, if you have any questions, please make sure to reach out to me on Twitter, Discord, or here on YouTube. And uh, that's it for the video, you guys. But uh, let's see. Yep, I got nothing else to say. But have a good night, guys. And we'll see you tomorrow at the bell. Adios.